Okay, y'all. I got this chair. I got four of them, actually. Two of them are in good condition. Two of them are broken. And hopefully, Eric will be working on those for me next week. But remember that red and black farmhouse table I painted? And Amy from Favored Nest came and showed me how to um, do the farmhouse stencil on top and all that well I uh, it didn't have any chairs it's still sitting in there for sale and I'm like that table needs some chairs and so I've been looking and watching marketplace and I finally found these chairs I think I paid $30 for all four which is an awesome price but uh, two of them are broken but luckily I'm married to a carpenter so here they are and here's what I'm thinking they're a little bit slick this is a little bit of a slick surface but i'm not going to use slick stick on them the diy paint is touted for sticking to everything so this is a clay based paint and it's the same paint that i used on the legs of the farmhouse table let me see if i can turn this around for a second and where you can see the table in the other room well let's see there it is see it see the black legs and the red table over there that's the table that i'm painting these chairs to go with i believe a table that has chairs to go with it i, I wanted him to build me benches for it but got tired of waiting so now i got these chairs and we're going to slap a coat of paint on here real quick and get our first coat on of the diy paint before i go home for the day today and uh, with the DIY paint, remember your best friends are water and dampening your brush about halfway up. You know what I should probably do? Use a good brush. Um, let me look in my bag here real quick. I'm going to, this one's a little smaller than I would think, but I'm going to use the Paint Pixie number eight. That's the smaller one because these things hold a honey load of water and paint and i'm gonna have my mister to um to mist the piece to begin with and let's get some paint on it i don't know where to start at i know i'm going to end up with this paint on me but i'm going to go ahead and do it so i'm uh just going to wet my brush some this is a brand new container of paint but I'm, I'm going to use it by the time I paint all four chairs I'm going to have this used up so I'm not worrying about contaminating it I'm just dabbing right in it this is I got a lot of water running on this to begin with what's so good about this uh, paint pixie number eight is I can get up in those crevices very well there and I uh, reach the areas that I need to re reach. I would probably rather have the number 12 when I'm working on the large flat surface of the seat, but I don't have a number 12 with me today. So we're going to use the number eight, but see how easy it's going up in there to get those interior surfaces. It gets right up next to the uh, edge of the spindles. And it's running a little bit in a couple areas because I put a whole bunch of paint on it to start with. I mean a whole bunch of water on it to get started with but the point I want to make here is you can change the look and the color of, of a chair and of your entire dining uh, dining room dining area furniture whatever within just a few minutes this does not take long at all And it's going to look very nice once I have a whole complete dining set in there painted together instead of just the one piece. So all I'm trying to do is rush and get this first coat on it for today. have two of the chairs in there ready, so I'm going to try to get both of them at least with the first coat on them today before I call it a day. Or I call it a day up here because I'm trying to finish up our February uh, $10 class project tonight. Very excited about it got up early and cooked dinner before I left for work and finished my regular work work already today so if I can get a, a first coat on both of these chairs I'll feel good about my productivity for the day worrying going not worrying but going down and making sure that all my brush strokes are straight on this first coat this clay-based paint will 
it's adhering just great to this, you know, semi-slick surface, but it will also, within 30 days, cure to a very um, hard clay stucco-like finish. So that's the bonus round. And why I, well, I chose this paint because it matches the legs of the table that I've already painted as well. But I chose it for those legs because it, it finishes to a hard finish. Whenever it's something you're going to be using a lot, I mean, this is a chair. It's going to have people sliding on and off of it. You know, your back pockets and buckles and buttons and all those things are going to be scraping back and forth back and forth on the painted finish so you want to make sure that you get a tough durable finish both on your tabletop when you're working on a table and also on the seat of the chair because it does get a whole lot of use their uh, diy has a couple of blacks there's black velvet and little black dress um I believe the little black dress is the truer black of the blacks and maybe the um, the black velvet has a little bit more of a gray black finish to it and this one's the darker one so this is the one I chose to begin with for the farmhouse table and then now I'm using for the you know the chairs to match it I'm not going to do the underneath of the chair that some people do, some people don't. Uh, furniture manufacturers don't, and if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. Now, if I was to get too much splotchy mess around underneath there, and, you know, and it didn't look professional, I would go back and do that, but that's not the case here. These chairs are real heavy. They look like solid wood. I do not believe it's solid wood. I believe it's a solid wood looking like product the way that things are made today. But they are still nice sturdy chairs. I'll come down this way up from the center of the top on this side and then go down the other side over there. I'm getting this whole back piece done before I come back and get the legs. I know I could have done those front legs first, but I wanted to, just in case there were any drips, and there are, let me turn it around over there, you can see, that would have been showing later on if I hadn't uh, left it alone or if I had left it alone and let it dry a little bit, then I had to, would have had to worry a little bit about that run leaving, you know, a raised texture. But all those things are, you know, whatever is your preferred method is absolutely gonna work. I love, love, love this brush because it's so lightweight and the it doesn't give me bad wrist fatigue the fancy word for it doesn't make my wrist hurt <laughs> job hazards wrist fatigue I don't even know if my husband would understand that if I told him, but he probably would because he's a carpenter. And I get, uh, personally, I get wrist fatigue from using a hammer a lot. Um, if you're, I didn't know this until I married a carpenter, you know, 25, 30 years ago, ever how long it's been. Uh, hammers, we bought uh, ourselves a matching set of hammers probably 25 years ago that were meant to have like shock absorbers in there, almost like a, a tuning fork type thing inside there that would absorb the ring back or whatever, the ding back of the uh, pressure of the hammer going down against the surface. It would absorb that like a shock, a shock absorber and not, uh, 
causes much fatigue for the wrist and hammers are weighted differently. I didn't know that either. I thought a hammer was a hammer, but they have, you know, sort of like pool sticks. They have different weights of hammers and different classes of hammers. So, you know, whether you need a three pound hammer or a six pound hammer and a shock absorbing hammer and all those things become important if that's your, you know, the tool of the trade that you do for a living and you have that repetitive motion of using and doing the same thing over and over again like we do as painters my wrist which i don't know if i've shown you that my scar i let me see yeah there it goes i can't twist my arm that way but anyways i have a steel plate in there and nine pins i i got only have 70 percent use so having made and plus i'm old i mean i'm you know uh, unless you're older than me, then I don't mean to insult you by saying old, but I'm not a young whippersnapper anymore, if you can use whippersnapper for a girl. But anyways, I'm 55, and whenever I do repetitive motions like the ones that I'm enjoying doing right now, all day long, over and over and over again, the same exact motion, it can wear out the joints in your wrist and give you some pain and I want to avoid that, so that's why I choose to use um, brushes that feel weighted properly to my hand. I'm gonna get a tad more water on the end of my brush. It's getting a little bit of drag and a little bit of pull. And whenever you're, when you're working with the clay-based paint especially, when you feel it giving a little bit of resistance, that's when you need to wet your brush again, mist your surface again, whatever it takes to keep the paint fro flowing freely. While I have it this direction, I'm going to go ahead and do these back legs. Get her done. I'm going to go all willy-nilly with getting it on there around these surfaces and then go back and get my brush strokes right. This chair will soon be black. The lady I got it from will never recognize it. I'll be able to see more of this inner area once I get around to the other side. I just want to get everything that I can see from here while I'm here so I don't end up with paint all over my forearm and my shirt and everything else later when I'm trying to get the rest of it. If I was to have chosen, you know, a, a lot of times I've talked about that I started with, you know, just Sherwin-Williams paint. And had I painted over this surface, which is, is smooth and a little bit slick with that paint, it would have peeled off later. So it does, you know, you don't always have to use the same brand of paint for everything and all that. But it does make a big difference when to take your surface into consideration when you're choosing what paint to use on it. Because this is slick. That's why I, and to match the table, that's why I chose the DIY because of the adhesion qualities and because of the, um, the strength and durability of the clay-based paint once it dries. I mean, if you've ever, my grandparents had a stucco home. If you uh, have been around that, you know, you know, it's, it's like concrete. It's, it's very solid.
those brush strokes right. such a therapeutic way to finish out your work day. It's dragging just a little bit again, so I'm just faintly going to miss the areas that I'm about to work on. Get that paint flowing freely. See when you get back to this side how this is already looking gray that's the clay based paint drying that of course will reactivate when we put the second coat on and then when we put the top coat on it we'll use a big top on this or liquid patina I think is what I used on the table leg so I'll use that same thing once I put that on here it'll you know reactivate it back to the deep black color and keep it that way for the life of the finish. There we go, forearm painted. I know me. Probably a person who really cared about whether they got paint on themselves would have turned this over and done this underneath part first. But I like to live life on the edge. How about that? How about that? I will have to lift it up in a minute to get this under the bottom part. You leaving, Candy? Yep. Okay. See you tomorrow. All right. Love you. Bye. If my table had been white instead of red, I probably wouldn't even put a second coat of paint on there because the little bit of the white streaks that are showing through here, turn the light up a little bit, are really cool looking and make the chair look old. So that is pretty awesome. Bring it around. what we might have missed under here and it's a lot somebody's car is going off it's the thing about car alarms nowadays that happens so often that nobody even pays attention when it does happen
our strokes in the direction that we want them. Man, I still may leave it looking distressed like this. It really, really does. Let's see if I can get you close enough to see any of that. It really does look nice and distressed with the bits of white coming through. We shall see tomorrow what the difference is on that. Did you get that yogurt for Justin? I didn't. I forgot. I'll have to get it tomorrow. Well, you're here. Huh? You're here. <laughs> it's in the refrigerator in back. Okay. Okay. I'm going to grab the... Whew, look like alfalfa. I'm going to grab the other chair. Do this same thing to it so I can come in tomorrow to them. Both being ready for me to put the second coat on. I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions about how to fix your hair and have this lovely little look, just, <laughs> just let me know. Thanks. Bye.